Ambitious and motivated are words that describe you best. Then you're on the right place. This is Motivational Radio Friends from Paris with your host, Longi Akoha. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I am privileged to be speaking to Ubong Essien, Dean of the School of Eloquence. And he is going to speak about motivation and coaching today. So how are you, Mr. Ubong Essien? Very well, thank you. Okay, I just wanted to ask you, what, what do you, in your own word, what is motivation for you? What is it? Well, within the context of the work that I do as a motivational speaker, All right. that's a very broad question. So it's going to depend on what you, how you want me to frame that. It's a very broad question. If you're asking about what motivation means for me personally... Well, how do you motivate your clients? I don't think I necessarily uh, motivate my client as much as... I actually just point the options in front of them and the consequences and allow them to make the choices. What I essentially do is more or less awaken people's people's sense of consciousness to understand the dimensions of what is at stake for them. Mm-hmm. Whether they are dealing with their careers or running a business or managing organizations or whatever it is that they are doing. My job, I believe, is to call them realize or to understand the dimensions of what they are into, what is at stake and the consequences of certain actions or inactions and more or less to challenge them in the right direction to make the right choices for themselves. Now, what happens thereafter goes beyond my purview because people must now make these choices to either go after their dream, either make certain changes to behavior, to either pursue certain things differently. That is the motivational element. And very often, in my view, it comes more from the persons because they must want to. We cannot create a want to eat. What we can do at most is to shed the light for them to see what is at stake and to appreciate what the dynamics or what the dimensions are, then they must decide, okay, I want to do this, I'm ready for it, and I'm going to go for it. Okay, I want to do this, or I don't want to do this. So that's our role. It's always important for me to draw, to know where to draw the line. That even though in terms of uh, marketing nomenclature, we are called motivational speakers. In the end, I think what we're just doing is to provoke people to the various options in front of them, they must make that choice. They must cross the bridge. And that's just what I believe I do. Okay, that's very good. What you just said makes me remember someone like Tony Robbins who said he's the why guy, the why man, the man who asks why. He he wants to know why people do the things they do. So maybe you're trying to say that motivational speakers are people who want to ask other people, why do you do this thing? And what is it that makes you do that so that somehow while speaking about it, you, you are conscious of the fact that you have to change and then you begin to accept change yourself, isn't it? Yes, at the end of the day, the individual must make would make the commitment. It's as simple as that. My role is to set the tone. I mean, there, there are lots of very smart people for the organization, for most of the, most of the organizations that I work for, uh, very high profile blue chip organizations. I mean, some of them probably have... Uh, uh, richer life experiences than I do. I probably have a much uh, significant qualifications than I have. And so if I have the privilege of addressing them, it's not as if I'm, I'm trying to push them. Now, at that level, that's not the intent. At that level, what you're trying to do is to provoke, so to speak, them to to take a look at the options in front of them, to take a look at the issues and then and determine what is it exactly, how badly do we want to do this? We must want to do it at the end of the day. That's really the question people must ask. People must really want to get things done. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter what I say, for how long I say it. So we are just agent provocateurs, so to speak, to just challenge people and let them perform. Challenge them. We cannot push them to perform. At times, people can be generous in their compliments and say, this person changed my life. In the end, nobody does that. Those changes. It's people who make those commitments that bring about the results that they are looking for. We have we are only privileged to set the tone. So to speak. privileged to, to awaken them to a much higher level of consciousness, a much deeper sense of appreciating what is at stake. People know what's at stake, but sometimes it just doesn't dawn on them as it should. That's why we come in to say, look, this is what it is in a different light. Then people begin to find a way to say, you you know what? I think I'm going to now have to do this, given the way I now see it. And that's really, for me, the way motivation should work. Okay. 
Right. So, th- in fact, this is another perspective you're putting here. Generally, people believe that they make others change, you know, but you're trying to say that no, the, the, the change comes from the individual, you know, you just maybe try to show him this is this and this is that. Say, oh, okay, I have seen that. Now I can do it or I have the capacity to change and all the rest. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, good. So how would you, if for any reasons, let us say that you are working with a client and you, you, you are trying to make him get better at speaking as a, as a public speaker, but the thing is he is not motivated. He doesn't have the, the, the knack to go to, to do the thing. How would you buy into his own story so that he will not come out from that shell where he's hiding? Well, it, again, it goes back to the point. I mean, most of my, most of my public speaking classes if not virtually all of them. Everyone that shows up wants to face that challenge. Everyone that shows up truly wants to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. That's why they show up. To learn the art of it, to be coached through it, to be taught the subject matter. That's why they are there. So I don't spend my time trying to motivate them, Mm -hmm. trying to make them see reason or want to. They are there because they want to fix an issue in their lives. And that happens to be the art of speaking in public. So, so that takes, takes that issue effectively off the table for me. Okay, that's that's good. <laughs> that's it. So you're not even even up to that. That's not your concern. That's not the main concern. Yes, because people only show up. It's like saying, "How do you motivate somebody to eat?" You you cannot. You really cannot. Because internally there must be a mechanism that indicates that the tank is empty. I need to refuel. You, you don't need any motivation for that. Especially if you're driving a car, if you're running long, so you know that there will be consequences. You know there will be consequences if this gets out of hand. You don't need any external force to prompt you because you know there will be consequences. I have to refuel. I must refuel. I want to refuel. I need to refuel. Otherwise, I'm going nowhere. So it's in my best interest to show up and get fueling. And that's really more or less the the same concept when people show up at the school of value points with regards to public speaking. They've either been embarrassed or they've lost the opportunity to be promoted at work. Someone else was given a job because they could speak well or better than they could or they are frustrated because they've got so many ideas and they are unable or they are scared of coming out openly before audiences large or small to articulate those thoughts. So that internally, so when they show up from within them, there is a strong motive for that action. So I am not that in hand. My context is not to try to motivate them, but rather to fill their tanks, to let them have whatever information. In fact, most times, I find that most of them are able to, by themselves, make my job a lot easier because they are motivated to learn. <laughs> Already? Okay. They are motivated to learn. Things are a lot faster. They ask more questions. They put themselves out there to do the exercises because they are already motivated. Right. And it's not me who put that in. Okay. It's very clear for us now because uh, our listeners will get a picture exactly what it is that we do not motivate people. We only show them what is right and already they are when they are into this into the picture or they buy the picture they that's it they are already motivated already that when they come into your program they are already motivated to change something in their lives then it becomes a lot easier for you exactly. right well, okay anyway i don't want to drag this aspect of motivation because you're not into your own is public speaking now how would you for any reason if uh, our listeners some of them want to key into your your story that is uh, they want to learn public speaking do, do you, you know, do, is it online, for example? Do, do you do it online, for example? We're currently working on putting out various online options. I haven't done this for seven years. I know that um, I will presently have an IT team working on trans, I say, translating or transforming the entire program into uh, an online version that people can have access to either via the typical LMS or through downloads and what have you now the IT guys are the ones modeling this so all they are using what we've done on ground in real face to face classes and they are developing online ver- various online versions that people can tap into so I, I cannot tell you for now how it will pan out until they finish their work between now and hopefully the end of the year then come 2014 God willing we will be able to officially openly let people have some options that uh, they can through which they can access some of our programs if they are not able to be here with me in Lagos, Nigeria 
for the monthly classes that I run. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. See, that's a very wonderful thing. That because when I saw your your pedigree, I was kind of attracted, and I wanted to know exactly what it is you do. You know, now that I know, I have a clearer picture of of what it is. Uh, would you would you accept coming back to our program one day and uh, you know giving us more insights to, as to what you do, uh, so that many of our listeners would uh, you know buy your story much more than because I have a feeling that you're you're up and doing now and you want to run away. Uh, would you accept to come in one day, one more time maybe, and uh, tell us more of your story? Yeah, I mean that shouldn't be a problem. Just like we've done today. Hopefully. Hopefully, I mean, just give me a call or send me an email or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure that can always be worked out. That's not going to be a problem. As long as there's time to do this, I'm happy. I'll be more than glad to. So let me not hold you back. Maybe is it possible for you to introduce yourself to our listeners and so that they know who you are exactly? Well, uh, well, my name is Ubong Isien, and there's just so much about me that sometimes it's difficult to say which of those should I pick. I, I run a school called the School of Eloquence. Here in Nigeria, I'm referred to as Nigeria's Mr. Motivator. I have been speaking for over 13 years now, professionally. I belong to the National Speakers Association based in the U.S. called the NSA. I'm a certified speaking professional from the Body. I think as a matter of fact, uh, I am currently the only certified speaking professional in the whole of West African sub-region. There are nine certified speaking professionals in the whole of Africa. Eight of them are currently in South Africa. And if you can Google the NSA and the CSP, the certified speaking professional designation is, is not an award. It's an earned designation. You have to earn it professionally too to be among the top 6 to 9% of over 10,000 professional speakers in the world that have attained that level of professionalism in terms of speaking professionally. So in a nutshell, given all of that, that would probably be my, my introduction or in terms of my profile at a glance. Hopefully in some of your subsequent interviews, we might be able to get a lot more personal and I might have the opportunity to share my story how I started and what I have been able to do and the work that I have there. And I'm sure that if you're able to do some Googling, if I may use that word, on my personal website, ubongasian.com or the School of Eloquence website, schooloveloquence.org, I'm sure you'll have some adequate materials or information that distills my story and my person. Okay, you, you started by saying you were, you were very awkward at that, but find out you, you say, said much more, which is very good. Now, at least I have a clearer picture and I guess our listeners will also have clearer picture of who you are or who we're, who we're dealing with. All right. Thank you very, very much. And I hope I will catch you up again very, very soon. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. This podcast was brought to you by the Motivational Radio France with your host, Lonjago in Paris.